Um, yep. Let's move to the Jets. Last team in the division, okay? Um, and once again, for the benefit of our YouTube crowd, since we break these segments up, the 2020 Fantasy Football Automatic and Draft Guide Proprietary Fantasy Football Analytics. I plot the plays. I watch all the games. I isolate matchups. No fantasy guide, no fantasy magazine goes as deep as the 2020 Fantasy Football Almanac and Draft Guide. Look in the link below, available on Amazon.com. Uh, for our podcast audience, thanks for listening to about three or four different promos there. Um, so, the uh, okay, so New York Jets. We talked about this. Sam Darnold, um, when he wasn't out with the kissing disease, uh, in the 13 games he played, he was 7-6. and six. The first season um, with uh, Adam Gase at, uh, at head coach, Adam Gase did really well, I thought, when Ryan Tannehill was healthy in Miami. Uh, we saw what Tannehill did last year in that late season run, so he plays some quarterback. Um, Sam Darnold, I think, is a better quarterback uh, than Adam Gase has ever had. That's a group outside of, I think, the season he shared with Peyton Manning, but that's a group that shared um, maybe a season of Tim Tebow. Uh, it shared uh, Adam Gase coached um, Jay Cutler in Chicago and in Miami, I guess. He coached Ryan Tannehill in Miami. Sam Darnold, I believe, is better than all those quarterbacks. Um, Sam Darnold now has Le'Veon Bell, and that role solidified. We know what we're going to get from him. Uh, you get uh, you know a rookie kind of running back, although they did add Frank Gore, by the way, Brad, is now a, a New York Jet. Um, is he going to make Jesus. it? I know, man. 37 years old, thir- number three overall rusher of all time. Um, Unbelievable. That dude sticks. And now, is he going to make the roster? I think he will, man. I think he will. I just, man, he's good. And also, Frank Gore uh, spent a season, I believe, with Adam Gase in Miami. So I think they kind of know each other. But um, I could be wrong on that. I don't know if there was overlap, but I think so. Uh, wide receiver, you get Jamison Crowder. Brashad Perriman comes over from Tampa Bay. Uh, you get Denzel Mims, who a lot of people are high on as a rookie receiver. But, Brad, I agree with you. I mean, these rookie receivers kind of hit and miss. For me, the one that is the safest hit of rookie receivers is Ruggs down there in o- uh, Oakland, just with the brand of football they want to play down there. But uh, Mims, um, kind of that late first round, early second Oh, I believe he was a second rounder, my bad. Um, you lose... Let's see, uh, Robbie Anderson, he goes to Carolina. But you don't really lose a lot more than that for the Jets. And then on top of that, Brad, they reloaded. Like I said, they get Quincy Wilson. They get Frank Gore. You get George Fant. You get Connor McGovern. Um, This team, other than losing Robbie Anderson, didn't really lose that much from last year, man. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I'm looking at their – well, why don't don't you talk about the Jets before we get to the over-under? What do you feel about them? Oh, uh, by the way, they were seven and nine. We talked about that. They went seven and yeah. nine in the late season run. Yeah, they were seven and nine. So they finally figured it out and started getting it together. And I think that momentum is just going to keep them going. Like we said, they they may have the best quarterback in the in the division. Mm-hmm. So usually that gets you a division title. Right. Right. Um, although maybe not in this case because we do like Buffalo, but yeah. uh, they have the best running back. And I know I always put running backs down. Uh, in this league, but still it matters to some degree. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that they can just, I think they can make their way, man, and, and, you know, keep getting better and keep getting better and finally be a team that's not kind of like a joke. You know, it's always like five weeks into into the season, they're out of it type type deal. You know, they've been that team a lot. You know, listen, if Darnold didn't go down, this is the reality here. If Darnold didn't go down with the kissing disease, you know, if he wasn't sharing cups, if he wasn't kissing questionable people in the middle of the night, um, look, this team could have gone night. Yeah, I know this team could have won two out of those three games and made the playoffs. That's that's how close this team was last year. And now what's seared in our memory, because we, we think about things as, as of like the beginning of the NFL season, and then we can remember the last few games. But you don't really remember the regular season when you're thinking about these things. But you remember, like, the th- because uh, Darnold went down, and then in the first game after he went down, the backup went down, and they were going to this third-string quarterback who they later waived in the regular season, or, um, during the regular season, I believe, and they just looked so bad. And we can't get that image out of our head, but, <clears throat> dude, like, Darnold, he's all right. And then I look at Jamison Crowder. So if you're in a fantasy football league, in a PPR league specifically, you got to snap Jamison Crowder up. He's drafted ridiculously low right now. Last year, 122 targets, 78 receptions, 833 yards, six touchdowns over the middle on kind of a weekend um, watered-down offense thanks to that Darnold injury. He's going to – dude, he could be the new Jarvis Landry, which is what I talked about last year, filling this role in an Adam Gase system that made Jarvis Landry famous there. Um, I think he's going to be good at wide receiver. The big question for me is what are they going to do over the top? Um, like Brashad Perriman, he's been a career disappointment. He popped a few games last year in Tampa Bay with Jameis Winston just kind of chucking the ball downfield. 
Um, but hasn't really carried a team. Is he going to be the starting guy over there? Quincy Inouye, I think, is already out for the year again. Denzel Mims, the rookie. That's the concerning thing to me is I don't know what we're going to get from receiver, but they got an offensive tackle early in the draft. Those guys always make an, an impact early, those you know early season offensive tackles, because even if you suck at offensive tackle, they can move you to guard and still get something out of you. Um, I think this team is going to be able to run, and Darnold is going to be able to work the middle of the field with Crowder. And I like the tight ends in Herndon and um, Griffin. And, uh, you know, I think the defense will get better with Greg Williams. So, again, I look at this team, and I could see anything. I could see a 9-7 and seven season, given that they went 7-9 and nine in, a, in a bad, kind of lukewarm or watered-down season last year. The over-under, Brad, for the New York Jets, according to um, Bet Online, is seven wins over-under that, Brad. Mm, mm, mm. I think that they are going to... Boy, that's right on the money. I would say seven if I had had the bet. You know, I'm gonna push go on that. Yeah, I would push that for sure. Uh, I think they hit seven. I think I think they'll win eight. I think this is gonna be a battle. I think the division winner wins ten games um, this year. I think Buffalo wins ten games. If I had to guess, and I'll 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 put a more intelligent guess uh, behind all these. If I had to guess right now, I'd say the Bills are at ten and six. Uh, the Patriots are at eight and eight. Dolphins are at seven and nine. And the Jets are at nine and seven. That's kind of how I feel about the division. Uh, but again, the Jets are at plus eight hundred to win the division. I think they give you the best value if you're into futures. Um, but the Bills are giving you plus as well. And I think uh, you know there's a little bit of value. You can at least double your money there. Uh, yeah, man. That's uh, man. This is an interesting division. For the first time in twenty years, Brad, I'm looking forward to seeing this. How this I AFC know, I know. East shakes out. I know out. it's a lot of fun. There were a couple of years with Rex Ryan and the Jets that were like, okay, you know, what, what's going to happen there? But you know, were you ever going to bet your money on the uh, butt fumble, Matt Sanchez, or no, you know? no, they did have a couple moments, um, but the answer to that is no. Yeah, but now there are quarterbacks in this division. You got Tua coming in, so you're going to get some youth and some, some vigor in the Miami uh, Dolphins organization. You got Jared Stidham, who Patriots fans are super high on, Josh Allen, and Sam Darnold. These are the best crop of four quarterbacks that we've seen also, like top to bottom in this division um, in four years. And you gotta you can make the argument that Jared Stidham is the worst of the, the quarterbacks. Now, I don't think the Patriots fans would. I don't know that I would either. But suddenly you're looking at the Patriots. Could they have the worst quarterback in this division for the first yeah, time? Yeah, they could. You know? Um, I don't even know when the last time you could say that because Bledsoe was never the worst quarterback in that division. He went on a run, took the team to the Super Bowl in like the mid nineties against the Packers. So yeah. it's kind of uncharted territory for the, right. for the Patriots here. It's gonna be interesting, man. Gonna be a fun division. Uh thanks everybody for uh for listening in. I do think there's some value here as a better, so go out, make some bets, and get paid. <laughs>